doesn't work. Yeah. Joining us right now, your TV analyst for the Sacramento Kings, who is searching for a nickname. I have ideas, but I won't share them on the radio. Uh, live from Miami, the one, the only, uh, from Alturas slash Likely slash the top right corner of the country the first number one the first congressional district by the way in california that's that's that county there modoc uh katie lauren christian yeah, so so the, the top right uh corner of california not the country or i'd be what up in maine I, i'm not a oh, i say I, country I all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the state good, good morning fellas How's uh, Miami? You've been in Miami. You guys get, uh, what'd you get there? You got there Monday night, and you get Monday night. Well, not really, because it was late, but then all day Tuesday, all day uh, today, you got the game. Then all day tomorrow. Man. And then, you know. Yeah, we leave Friday afternoon. It's kind of weird to be in a in a city this long during a road trip. And where it's like, oh, you know, it's 85, 83 degrees, and the weather's, you know, like a, like, hot and kind of muggy or whatever and who can complain about being in Miami in November. It's weird to be in one place for so long on a road trip. So I'm kind of like, oh, I miss my daughter. I miss my dog. <laughs> it's the first well, I, road trip, so it's an adjustment this year. Dogs are stupid. Go ahead. <laughs> so oh my gosh. did you take part of the three-hour tour on this yacht yeah. or what? I absolutely did. Yeah. Everybody. It was, it, it was open to everybody and it's that's the honestly the best part about being on the road not yacht you know trips or whatever i mean that it's just that you unlike when you're at home Jason, you know you go to work you go to the arena you have your routine you go to media you you're getting ready for for the game you don't really interact like you do at home um the opportunity that you get on the road is so different so it's great like meeting the new staff being around you know, the players in a different capacity and, and their, their wives and their family that's here. It was fun. It was a fun little, little boat ride, if you will. <laughs> I could tell by all the pictures you posted. I'm not a big picture poster. Gary but... Gerald put a picture up, Katie. I know. G-Man's just better at that stuff than me. I, I, I'll get better, I promise. Okay, listen, we got to move on to game stuff, but right. obviously I could spend the whole time talking about this yacht trip. So, was, okay, here's my question. What was uh what was for dinner and was there like any active was there like limbo was there any activity okay. on the yacht was Charo there yeah so there there was like a happy hour um and it's like a three level yacht so you could be on any of the three levels or it's probably four but we don't go down below um but then uh for dinner there was um, prime rib and like a lemon chicken um and uh like a grouper which everyone said is really good i i actually had some fried ribs shocking um and then yeah it was just salad and and you know desserts and um some vegetables and really really great roasted potatoes so it was, it was yummy nice activity yeah was there a game uh there there was a dj at the end um that they had hired and uh, I don't know, Penny is a woman that kind of handles all this stuff for the Kings, like, and she had hired the CJ, but everyone was kind of in the dining room watching the Miami and Golden State game. <laughs> and she's like, Katie, you've got to help me get people up to the dance floor. So there's actually a lot of women that, you know, work for the Kings and travel on the road. So there was about eight or nine of us that went up there. And then I gradually pulled, you know, I had the security team dancing. I had <laughs> Some like some of the staff dance. It was fun. It was fun, but that nice. lasted for all of like twenty minutes. Right, so take, that was our activity. Take over, Jason. Jay, Jay just gave Jay, Jay's done with the boat talk. I Why? That's where I was yeah, thinking. That's, that's where we needed the pictures yeah, and all that. Yeah, as we're yeah, uh, talking yeah. to Katie Christensen here, all guests brought to you by the Folsom Lake Honda Hotline, your one-stop Honda shop. So, Katie, we we heard the news: bone bruise, no structural damage. That sounds encouraging. Any, I don't know, concern on amongst the Kings about De'Aaron missing any more time than just tonight? Not that I've, I've heard. Um, I went to practice yesterday and watched all of practice. It was, you know, it was a great practice and, and De'Aaron was on the sideline and, um, you know, was talking to him throughout the thing because the Steve Nash news kind of broke during practice. Um, so we were just kind of chitty chatting on the sideline, he and I and, and Kyle Draper. And, you know, he got, he got some, you know, stationary shots up. He's not, you know, by my eye, not looking like he's laboring, but they did not do any any running, any anything on the bike, anything like that. So 
as far as I have been told, it's, you know, just out for today. And I, I'm assuming it's kind of a day-to-day thing, but that's where this kind of gap in between games plays into the team's favor. Hopefully by, you know, the game in Orlando will, will be feeling better. Katie Christensen with us. Uh, so it's Davion time. And, you know, let, let's not start the whole who are they, they better with Davion or De'Aaron, but in your mind is Davion. Oh, my God. I know, I know. I, I, some, na- some national people just need to yeah. stick to the nationals. <laughs> has, has Davion in your mind? He's had a rough start. Um, oh, well, let me ask you this, Katie. Is it just me? Because I'm not hearing this anywhere else, which usually means it's just me and I'm weird. I think it was game one. Davion Mitchell got crashed into – and he hit the floor, and he was and his he was holding his shoulder, and I had this theory that Davion was actually hurt, and you know as well as anyone, players don't like to talk about their injuries during the season. But yeah. did, did, did have you noticed anything? And in your mind, is it possible he's been nursing that injury? He's just better now. I guess it's possible, but I haven't seen anything okay. or heard anything. I I truly think Davion struggles to start the season really have just kind of stemmed from, as we've seen, Mike Brown has been searching for rotations and just trying to familiarize himself with kind of his roster. And obviously there's um, a connection between he and Shima and KZ and Shemezi. And so, you know, talking to Mike Brown, like there's a lot of things, both offensively and defensively, that he just hasn't been able to, to put in place. And so... The things that he has put in place, obviously those two guys who played on the Nigerian national team are more familiar. And I think that's why we saw KD earlier in the season and it's kind of dropped off as he's getting more familiar and guys are getting more familiar with the system and the expectations. But for me, Davion, it, it's just a matter of, of Mike nailing down his rotations and feeling comfortable with guys in certain situations. To add to that, the fact that he shot so well during the preseason and then he struggled to start the season. So I think he went through a little bit of a mini slump and he kind of came out of that in Charlotte. And, you know, when you come in and you hit your first one, that's usually it kind of can get that, that, you know, anxiety, if you will, off your back. And you, you like it leaves your mind and you're not thinking about it anymore. And so he just played a very free flowing game. And then, of course, the De'Aaron injury in the second quarter, he obviously knew he had to step up and and he answered the call. Katie, what's the answer or the adjustment that needs to be made with Sabonis? Because right now teams are, one, either going at him and getting success with points or getting success the other way around and and getting him in foul trouble. What's the workaround there right now for Sabonis on the inside defensively? Yeah, I think that's really the biggest question mark for this team, right? The whole offense kind of runs through him, right? Uh, his, his passing ability as a center and the three as a big, and that's how their, their offense kind of flows. And when there's a marked difference when he goes off the floor of how the offense struggles. And at this point, you know, it's been such a small amount of time. I actually asked my friend, like, who are you comfortable on your second unit putting into that situation if, if Bill Moss is in foul trouble? You know, and I asked them about Trey Lyles, who high IQ, he's gotten you know, a lot more playing time. And this was prior to the Charlotte game when I asked him this question. He goes, well, at this point, the only one familiar with the five spot coming off the bench, other than like Deshaun and Alex Lynn, is Mezzi Metu, obviously, again, because of playing with the Nigerian national team. But then in that game, we saw him go with that super small lineup and Trey was running that position. So um, I thought that that was a telling moment, but it's a glaring deficiency. You've got Domas, two teams are clearly isolating to try and get into foul trouble. He's not much of a rim protector in the, in the standard sense of like NBA centers. You look back to Indiana, you know, playing alongside Miles Turner, who was a rim protector, a rebounder, but also could stretch the floor. Like, I think this is a really big question mark going forward because if he continues to, to be put in the position that he is defensively, that's getting him into foul trouble. You know, that's something I think that the front office has to look at and be like, is this sustainable? Because early on, it clearly has been an issue. Katie Christensen with us. Just to piggyback on that, that's been my thing for the last few games. They're asking DeMontis to do something of which he is not capable of doing, which is anchor a defense. So they're 
to you, unless there is a workaround, really, does that fall on the front office at some point here, hopefully soon, to say, hey, this isn't going to work. He's going to do nothing but get frustrated. Not only are we going to lose games, but we're trying to resign this guy next year. We got to go out and do something. Yeah, I would think that that is certainly a, a conversation that the front office is having amongst themselves. Um, because you've got to put guys in a position to, you know, succeed and for the team to, to be able to succeed and excel. Um, and I think that, you know, we're seeing that this is kind of an issue early on. We didn't get to see it much last season because it was a really abbreviated number of games. Um, so, you know, how, how would they have known? Um, but I, it's, it's got to it's gotta be a glaring kind of issue for them and something they're scratching their heads over. But the way that I look at it is right now, you know, it, it's got to come from various different outlets in terms of defensively. Does Mike Brown have to start looking at different options in terms of um, sending traps? Like, how can he help him avoid that? I don't know what the answer is, right? Um, traditionally, you'll go to, like, zone defenses to try and take some of the pressure off and, and you have more help. But I had also had talked to Mike about that the other day. And, you know, we haven't seen any zone from the teams at all this season. And, and I asked him, you know, like, what are your views on it? And he's like, well, in Golden State, he goes, I ran all kinds of zones. He's like, I ran a box in one, a triangle in two, a two, three. He goes, but we just have not had enough time to get to that. Because he's trying to instill kind of the philosophy of, of you know, player to player defense right now and trying to get them to play that at a higher level. So, you know, this kind of just goes to the fact you guys, like, yes, this team is much better. Yes, they struggled early. They're, they're trying to put in so much stuff and they've been together for such a short amount of time. It's not like a Warriors team that, you know, the core has been together for years. And then the, you know, the kind of pieces on the side have been and filled in and they're inserted into that culture. And it's a much easier kind of transition. This is starting from ground zero and really trying to go. So I, I don't know what the coaching staff is going to do, but obviously Domas getting in foul trouble and fouling out three of the first six days is, Trouble That's Katie Christensen. Check her out tonight on the call. Kings Miami. We'll have that, of course, for you as well, right here on Sacktown Sports. Have fun in Miami. I told you what to do out there. Hopefully you do it, and uh, we'll see you soon. We'll talk to you next week. All right, you guys. Have a good day. All right, take care. By the way, I said go to the beach. Have fun. That's what I did. We'll take a break. Uh, Sean Salisbury coming up next, and before that, we have major breaking news from